All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome, thank you all for making it um, on a special night of the week. Um, I know it's a little bit of an inconvenience to your calendar, but um, thank you for being here. Um, and first up, we have the minutes approval from the last meeting. Uh, the minutes have been posted on the Climate Action Task Force website. Um, hopefully some of you have had a chance to look through them. Um, does anyone have any uh, questions, comments, um, objections to the minutes? Is everyone good in approving the minutes? If I could just get like a nod or a thumbs up and we'll... All right, so the minutes will uh, be approved as currently posted. Um, and next up, we have uh, the city update, which I will be doing. Um, so the first thing is the city's uh, utility billing online payments update. The city's uh, utility billing payment system is transitioning to a new system. Um, and those enrolled in auto pay or online payments for services like water, sewer, stormwater, all that good stuff, um, will be required to resubmit saved payment methods beginning this month. Um, current auto pay setups will no longer work after the 26th. So if you are kind of in that category or know folks who are, let them know that they have to go to uh, beavertonoregon.gov slash billing to log in and uh, fill out uh, into the new system and, and resubmit that information. Um, there will be communication coming from the city with instructions for enrolling um, and changing your auto pay settings. Sometimes um, that might seem suspect, right? You get something telling you to change your auto pay settings. Um, these are legitimate communications from the city. So just uh, be aware that those are uh, headed out that way. Um, the next update is winter weather. Uh, we've been seeing some uh, winter weather. So just stay safe this winter by preparing in advance, which means uh, preparing now, not once it's in the forecast uh, for extreme weather, travel, power outages, outdoor safety, and, and any of that other stuff that can occur uh, during winter weather. So before a storm, be aware of storm watches and advisories. You can uh, sign up to publicalerts.org uh, to get alerts in the region when there's gonna be severe weather. Um, other things you can do is gather supplies like food, water, and medications for both yourself and your pets, um, and flashlights and batteries, and get all of your, your shopping done in advance so you can stay off the roads when it's dangerous out there. Um, if you're traveling, check the road conditions and closures, and of course, uh, check in on your neighbors or ask a neighbor or a friend to check in on you. Uh, I think we've talked about before that getting to know your neighbor is one of the, the best preps for uh, dealing with an emergency. And last up is um, on Tuesday, March 29th, the mayor will be hosting the 2022 State of the City. The city of Beaverton is uh, excited to invite community members to tune in. Um, so mark your calendars Tuesday, March 29th, 12 p.m. And Mayor Beatty will be sharing uh, recent accomplishments and highlighting the city's upcoming priorities. Uh, it's gonna be recorded. Um, and it will also uh, be in person. So stay tuned for more details on that. And an additional announcement is that Councillor Hartmeyer Prigg has been confirmed as the council liaison for the Climate Action Task Force for this year. Um, so we're really excited about that. And I will just uh, pass the mic to her and let her give uh, a brief introduction. Hi everyone, it's so nice to meet you. My name is Ashley Hartmeyer Prig. My pronouns are she, her, and I am so honored to get to be a part of this task force with you all. I'm really excited to learn from you and hear from you and uh, help you help push the city to be really bold on our climate action goals. Um, I can't say the whole meeting tonight, um, unfortunately. I'm, work, I'm traveling for work, which is a good thing, but it means I can't stay the whole night because I have another meeting. Um, but I'm just so thrilled to be a part of this group and I can't wait to get to meet you all and get to know you all as well. And I think um, Kevin's gonna put it on a future agenda where we'll actually do some of that work together and see like, how can I best serve this group and, and how can you give input to me and the council? So I'm looking forward to that. Awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, like the counselor said, um, we're looking at March to have kind of an open conversation to, to talk about all that. Um, next month, we have our half of our meeting is joint with the Bicycle Advisory Committee. And then so we've only got an hour for the second half. So, um, yeah, we'll uh, be posting those agendas and, and working on them. 
um, very soon. So next up on the agenda, sorry, I don't have it in front of me. Turner, what do we have next? <laughs> Looks like we've got leadership sorry. select. Leadership, yes. I was I'll happily have, informing you of that with my mic off. So I'll apologize. pull up the slides if you want to start. Uh, okay, great. Thanks. And I, I, I do apologize. I, my uh, large monitor that looms above here decided to take a vacation or something last week. So I'm reduced to one little tiny laptop screen to try to keep track of all of you and whether you're trying to ask a question or something as well as following the you know, PowerPoint slides and that sort of thing. So um, if I don't see you right away, speak up or maybe Kevin can keep an eye on you too, so. Sounds good. Thanks. Um, here we go. All right, sure so. I'll be able to see that. <laughs> um, there we go. Looks like it's starting. There we go. So as you may all remember, we solicited uh, nominations for a leadership team uh, at the last, after the last meeting. And uh, three folks were nominated by several members of the, of the task force. And they are there on the screen, Syed, Maggie, and Freddie. Um, have all been nominated and they I would add that they've all accepted uh, the responsibility for, whoops now we're seeing something else Kevin just so it'll it'll come back sorry I'm okay got a couple yep. things going on <laughs> no worries um, so uh, in, a, in a moment um, we will seek confirmation from the group as a whole uh, of the proposed leadership team um, but uh, and we'll do that in a moment. But um, first, uh, I wanted to remind you all of the duties that uh, these folks are accepting on your behalf. Uh, there we go. Ooh, um, so uh, the duties include interfacing and working with Kevin and the staff liaison, and uh, perhaps also with uh, Councillor Hartmeyer Prig as well as the as the Council liaison, uh, deciding on and drafting meeting agendas, chairing and facilitating meetings, helping to establish uh, the, a work plan for the task force and to develop subcommittees and work groups as needed and with the advice and consent of the staff who have to support those. Um, facilitating the public comment portion will be uh, a task for the leadership group. Uh, also important will be acting as a recorder, preparing meeting minutes uh, as, as you just recently approved a set that actually falls typically to the members of the, the leadership of the committee of the, of the task force and I'm not trying to say boards and commissions uh, for the city. And there's some training that'll be provided um, for, the, for the leadership group so they know how, how to do that properly. Um, uh, to represent the task force as needed with, you know, obviously with the consent of the task force uh, and to uh, lead the development of reports, et cetera, for uh, city council or departments that you're, you know, sort of manage those interactions. Uh, and then lastly, before we, we uh, take a, a vote of confirmation, uh, I wanted to invite each of our three proposed leadership candidates to just reintroduce themselves, um, maybe say a word about what they're looking forward to in this new capacity, and then really anything else they'd like to say at this point. I'll just start at the top of the list there with Syed. Uh, thanks, Turner. Thanks, Kevin. And uh, also thank you to everyone else. Um, those who uh, put my name forward, I, I really appreciate and uh, value the opportunity. I am looking forward to it. However, reading through this, now I'm reconsidering with all these duties. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, uh, uh, I, I think over the last few sessions where we have had the opportunity to get to know some of, you know, some of the colleagues here, I've, I've really enjoyed 
um, just being able to learn everyone's priorities, where people are coming from, uh, what's important to everyone. I think we have also all come to recognize, you know, that that shared fabric or tissue that that connects us in terms of all trying to be proactive and make some change happen. So I, I, I'm really fortunate to be able to leverage my experience, expertise, and collection of every all my lived experiences to be able to help inform and guide and set us up or enable us towards that shared goal and motivation, right? So I am, I'm just, I'm just hopeful that as we continue to work together, we are here as leadership, as you know, your colleagues to to kind of help ascertain and 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 set us set ourselves up to keep things moving forward and and that's really what i'm trying to commit to and show up for is just uh um you know make sure whatever work we do shows that value we all feel like we are engaged driven and everyone's contributions are held at the you know the standard that they deserve for their time and commitment so thank you again for the opportunity thanks sayed that's great all right Maggie? Um, yeah, so thank you. I, I really am honored to be nominated. Um, this is my first time ever serving on a city board or commission of any kind. So I think um, this is a really cool opportunity for me. And uh, I expect there is probably going to be a learning curve too. Um, you may or may not remember my background is actually in grocery. I've worked for um, New Seasons Market for 10 years, and I do some sustainability work there and um, background also as a community organizer and an activist. So this is all kind of new, um, but I'm a very collaborative person and I tend to not love hierarchies. So to me, everyone on um, this task force your perspective and your input is equally important to me. Um, and I'm just looking forward to seeing what we can do um, working together and um, and kind of getting to know a little bit about all of you and uh, also how city government works. So I'm excited and very honored. Thank you for the nominations. Great, thanks, Maggie and Freddie. Hey, good evening, everybody. Um, I'll keep it short and sweet, and I'll just uh, echo all the sentiments that Syed and Maggie uh, have put forth. So thank you to those who um, you know had put my name forth as well. Um, I am, I too, am looking forward to um, you know collaborating with everybody on on this uh, <clears throat> you know committee. Uh, we all have really different perspective and experiences and expertise, and so I'm looking really, really looking forward to you know, bridging all those connections um, and, and putting our shared vision forth, um, you know, in, in a way that can make some tangible change in the city. So yeah, thank you guys again. All right. Thank you, all of you. Um, we do need to take a formal action to confirm uh, this group as your leadership. Uh, at this point, we don't have an alternative decision-making uh, form uh, adopted yet, which we'll be talking about later in terms of the operating principles. So uh, I think we'll approve the slate or seek approval of the slate by vote. Um, and before we, we vote <laughs> or as we vote, does anybody have any questions or comments or anything for the, for the candidates or for the benefit of the group? I can't see everybody, so if you're... Um, are alternates allowed to vote for this? Alternates are not allowed to vote, actually, technically. I believe that's correct. Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong. But. Yes, that's correct. Alternates are non-voting members. So we should choose abstain um, one or just don't submit? I would just not submit. Well, thank you. Yep. Good question. Any other questions or comments? All right, we'll go ahead and uh, there should be a poll that popped up on your screen and you can go ahead and vote in support of the group or not or abstain from voting. How many voting members 
Yeah, I think we've got eight voting members with us okay. um, right now, if I'm counting correctly. Um, so we'll give it 10 more seconds. Anyone else wants to vote? I guess I've counted wrong. I see eight people have already voted. Um, so with that, it looks like um, it's it's unanimous. So thank you everyone for making that easy. All right. Oh, you couldn't just, you couldn't see that. Sorry. Um, can you see the results now? Yeah. There you go. I thought everyone could see that. Well, congratulations to our leadership team. Congratulations to the whole task force for uh, taking your first formal action and selecting a leadership group to help you through this next year, calendar year. Um, so we will be asking that group uh, to find a time to meet with Kevin and I in between this meeting and next to help plan the agenda and start to take on those uh, duties that were previously discussed. So look forward to that. All right, can I make this poll go away? There we go. All right, anything else on leadership before we move on? Next time it will it. be the leadership group running the meeting, not me <laughs> and Kevin. All right, um, well, the next thing, on the agenda for this evening was to kind of put the last piece of the puzzle in place for kind of how the group is going to formally operate um, by revisiting the operating principles that we discussed several meetings ago. And based on uh, some of the input we got, then we have uh, revised and simplified a bit and um, offer for your discussion and approval. So it's basically, again, operating principles. So boards and commissions that are formally created by the city of Beaverton usually adopt bylaws. You are uh, a task force, so you have a little more flexibility uh, in how you do things. And um, we offered up a set of uh, draft operating principles, which we reviewed with you that just basically cover um, nuts and bolts of how uh, you work together and make decisions and that sort of thing and covers leadership. Um, so I will, I can share my screen. And what we wanted to do was kind of go through them one more time and, and solicit any in, input or comments or suggestions for edits, um, which if they're pretty straightforward, we can uh, adopt here and now. And then, um, and, and then ideally adopt them at the end of that discussion. So, uh, Kevin? Yeah, I was just gonna tell everyone in case you're working with like limited screen capacity or something like that. These are all, um, I emailed you the, yeah. what Turner's about to share earlier today. If you haven't seen it in your inbox, um, you can look at it there or you can follow along on the screen. And I will hopefully find the right screen to share. All right, is everyone seeing that? I'm getting a couple thumbs up and nod, so presumably this goes for everybody, great. All right, well, um, I have to move, there we go. Uh, just to go through it really quickly, uh, the parts that are probably not too interesting, um, the name obviously of the, of the Climate Action Task Force, uh, the purpose being to help the city communicate its climate message to the community and ensure the perspectives of the community are offered, heard, and considered by leadership uh, as decisions are made regarding things that affect climate and climate action. Uh, and really engaging and sort of assisting with the city's commitment to the climate action plan adopted in 2019. The specific duties we've talked about in at a couple of different meetings, just a reminder of what they are. I won't read all through them, but uh, it's the set forth in resolution number 4712 uh, and you know, really focused on enhancing city council's awareness and communicating with city council and uh, serving as a resource 
um, for the city's engagement on these issues. I won't read them all through, but, um, and then the, the other sort of key point of the duties of the task force section, not embodied in the resolution, but uh, the work, working practice of, of all the Beaverton boards and commissions was to continue to use a, racially, a racial equity lens uh, to conduct the work of this group. Um, and a, a note about what that means there. Members, meetings, attendance, and term. So members are the 13 members appointed plus the non-voting alternate members. Uh, that have been appointed by the mayor and confirmed by the city council. There's a paragraph there that just kind of notes some of the experience within that group, um, sort of as a guide for future, uh, future appointments, a reminder in, an, in the operating principles or bylaws that, that you know, this kind of, diverse of diversity of experience is encouraged on the group. I mean, appointments are really a separate process. We can't tell the city council how to or who to appoint, but we can note what what um, what this group values in terms of lived experience. Um, meetings, monthly meetings, uh, and then if necessary, special meetings and uh, subcommittees noted there with with the support and co cooperation of of your your liaison staff liaison. Attendance, this is a, just a, a practical note. Um, everyone's expected to attend. You all are really good about that. Uh, so not something you probably need to worry about much, but there is a, a note in there that, that the task force collectively may request uh, replacement of a member if they miss more than four meetings over a 12 month period, just missing a lot of meetings and continuity and recognizing that, that there's a lot of people Alter, three alternates included who um, are really interested in being part of the, the, this group as well. So uh, vacancies, just noting that um, if you experience a vacancy for whatever reason, you can request the mayor to appoint um, and the city council to confirm a new member, to serve in the remainder of the unexpired term. So that's, this is if someone leaves unexpectedly in the middle of their term. And then speaking of terms, initially appointed members, you're st you may recall that you have staggered terms. Some of you are serving one, some two, and some three-year terms. The term of office uh, begins nominally on the first day of the calendar year. So really, this is like kind of like your first meeting. I think we've mentioned before that the several meetings leading up to this were sort of bonus uh, meetings for you. Um, and future appointments will be made on a calendar year basis. Um, so as terms expire, I, I believe the intent is to reappoint them in three as three-year terms. So you'll already be staggered at that point. So then everyone who joins from here on in will serve a three-year term um, and people can be reappointed um, if need be. Uh, I think that's all that's really in there. Oh, um, well, you're, just a reminder that the task force, according to the resolution is in effect for the duration of the Beaverton Climate Action Plan. And of course the mayor and the city council um, can remove members or terminate the group anytime at their, at their uh, as they see fit. Task Force Staffing, just a reminder, you have a staff liaison, Kevin, um, and he's providing all kinds of assistance arranging uh, meeting space. Maybe someday we'll actually need a meeting space that's not on a screen. That would be great. Uh, and and distributing notice and agendas and all that sort of thing that, that Kevin does. Um, he will also help facilitate getting information from the city and training new members and requesting funds for operation of this group, et cetera. Um, he's not a voting member of the task force. Uh, but he is definitely there to help. Meeting support and recording. Um, so uh, Kevin also provides a virtual platform as needed uh, and meeting support for that. Notice of meetings and recording of meetings. Recording on this, we still have to do minutes and that, as I mentioned, will become a responsibility of the leadership group. 
All right. Task force leadership. So this is what we just went through today uh, or completed today. The task force will select from among its members a leadership group. Co you all discussed and decided on the sort of co-chair um, or tri-chair model. So in this case, consisting of not less than two, um, nor more than four uh, members is what we put in, in, the, in these uh, operating principles. Co-chairs will all serve for one year and the selection will take place just like it did this time during the January meeting. Obviously you have to queue that up in the, the December, November, December meetings. Leadership group will have responsibilities. We've already been through that. I won't go into it. That just says all the same stuff again. Um, and a reminder that if you do want to create a subcommittee or call a special meeting, you really need to work with Kevin to make that happen. Um, and he has to some notice requirements that he has to fulfill on behalf of the city. So just to be aware of that. Now, here's the real interesting parts. Uh, we all discussed when we way back several meetings ago when we first discussed this, the consensus was that I think that you all wanted to use a consensus decision making model um, for the most part as as the model of decision making for this for this group for the task force. So this is a way of expressing that. Uh, obviously, you still need to have a quorum in order to do business if two people show up for some reason. Um, and the that's not enough to really take an action on behalf of the task force. Um, so uh, a half a majority of the group is considered a quorum for the conduct of business. Not that you can have meetings. I've, I've had uh, commissions that for whatever weather reasons or whatever, we didn't get a full quorum, but we still did lots of useful informational work. We just could not take any formal action. So. If you something does happen and you have a everybody's there for a meeting, but it's not enough for a quorum, you can still do some stuff. You just can't take do you know formal conduct of business. Consensus. So consensus is uh, defined as all task force members can live with the recommendation or decision. Uh, where appropriate, decisions will be made by consensus of those task force members present at a meeting so long as a quorum of members is present. Uh, in the absence of consensus, you have a couple of different options. Uh, one option is to bring forth your recommendation, noting the differences of opinion, areas of agreement, and areas of disagreement, if that works for the type of decision that you're trying to make. Um, there is a fallback if there if the task force remains after all its best efforts unable to make a decision using a consensus approach you may make a decision by a majority vote um, if you have to take an action on something and you're really deadlocked um, probably need to to have a meeting to figure out what that means for the work that you're doing but also just in order to to um, move along uh, the business of the of the task force, uh, this is kind of the fallback uh, option. Any questions or comments or thoughts or objections at this point? I just want to check in now that we've hit into one of the more meaty sections. And I can't see everybody. If you use your virtual hand, I think you pop to the top. So on my tiny little screen. seeing any. Uh, this next sec section, I don't think, I can't remember if that was in the original one we showed you. This is a set of process suggestions and ground rules that most every collaborative group that we help put together or facilitate adopts some set, usually remarkably like this, um, set of sort of ground rules and process suggestions for just how agreements about how they are going to interact with each other and behave in their meetings. Uh, in the unlikely event that 
that down the road at some point um, that there's a problem with participation in meetings, this gives you something to point to and say, we've made agreements uh, about how we're going to interact with each other and how we're going to behave towards each other. And uh, this is what should be happening or you need to not be part of this group. So, so that's, um, I mean, they're pretty straightforward, sharing information and perspectives and ideas at the same time seeking to learn and un really understand the perspectives of other members, encouraging respectful, candid, and constructive discussions, seek to resolve differences and reach consensus and make every effort to avoid surprises. So un unhappy surprises, especially if some a happy surprise is a good thing. Um, but it means basically being upfront and talk, saying what you think as soon as you can have an opportunity to articulate it, not hold it back. Um, sort of meeting ground rules is uh, many of you probably experience this in other meetings or groups that you work with, but basically stay focused on the task at hand. One person speaking at a time, especially important on this in the zoom world. Um, uh, allow for a balance of speaking time and be respectful of, of time limits in that regard. Being civil, it's, you may disagree and disagreement is a great source of uh, information and progress sometimes, but it's important to be able to disagree without being disagreeable, being tough on issues and questions, uh, but not on people and individuals, uh, avoiding kind of personal attacks. Um, keeping side conversations to a minimum. Uh, this is a new add-on for the Zoom world, which, which can include um, chatting, uh, on remote meeting platforms. So uh, a lot of chat that's not directed at the main conversation, side chat is discouraged. Uh, and then turning off or silencing cell phones, that's more of a, in the real, in a real meeting place kind of thing. But, uh, but also just, it's another part of keeping focused. And then finally, um, amendments. So all this is is still in your hands at, at any time. Task force can pro can propose to amend the operating principles. At a you know you have to do it at a regularly scheduled meeting, and it has to be on the meeting agenda that you want to do that. Um, so it may take a month to get there. But um, if you decide in the middle of a meeting that you need to make a change, you're going to have to wait to the next meeting to actually do it. But um, but you can. Uh, this is your document. This is a living document, and you can amend it, amend it as you see fit in order to accomplish your goals. Um, the proposed amendments, I would note, do have to be acceptable uh, to the city and the city staff because this is a, an instrument of the city. So you'll need to talk that through with Kevin at, at, a, at a starting point, at least. All right, that was a lot, really fast. But any questions or comments or thoughts? Well, uh, actually, so we, oh sorry, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, let's go ahead. Just wanted to, you know, like take a minute to, I know it does say the, you have it right up there, the amendment, like given that we are new, right? Like we're going to figure it out. I think it's important to keep in mind and look for opportunities where we feel like there are things here that we could amend to, to, to sort of standardize the way we operate going forward so i just wanted to call that out for everyone like hey I, I know we went through a lot of this information in terms of how we have set guidelines but you know it, it's important to iterate it and not like etch it in stone and continue to develop and evolve these so. yeah great points i had and um one thing that's notably not in here that we i think we talked about a little bit when we talked about operating principles before is kind of a uh standard operating procedure like how you're going to address issues and things like that and i it it felt like you were still exploring that and and it may come there may come a point where you decide to put in here hey this is how we're going to take on an issue we're going to get briefed on it and then we're going to discuss it and then we're going to table it to the next meeting and then we're going to finish these you know how, whatever it looks like but 
uh, you'll probably need to find that rhythm as you go forward. Any other questions or comments? So technically, we still need to vote on this, I guess, because you can't do it by consensus because it's not been adopted yet. But uh, does anybody have any concerns or questions about it? Does anyone uh, see any problems with it? All right. Can you? Well, rather than me try to make another poll in real time um okay vote with our our emoji icons um yes maybe we'll well actually those <laughs> well if you can see everybody quick enough i can see uh, those those will fade after a certain amount of time um but if and you, if you want to abstain you can abstain but it it looks like we've already got enough up here so um with that, um, we'll take it as, as no objections, um, and we'll approve the draft operating principles and remove the, the draft moniker and get those posted to the uh, Climate Action Task Force website where um, you can reference them whenever you want to have a read. <laughs> um, that's that. Congratulations again. Um, Turner, if you want to stop sharing. Oh, yes. Sorry. I'll rearrange some windows and start sharing again. Okay. Um, everyone can see that. Maybe. We can only see each other at the moment. You can only see each other. Yes. Oh, there we now go. How about now? In. There we go. Yep. All right. Bear with me for one second, everyone. Thank you for your patience. A lot of windows. Um, so that, so if you remember the last time we, um, we kind of ended our meeting with the, the Jamboard exercise where we were, we were throwing a lot of ideas around um, about possible focuses for the group and approaches. And we, we tried to categorize some stuff. Um, I sent a link to you all to, to the Jamboard if you wanna go back and reference it. But um, Turner and I, we spent some time looking through it and we kind of took the results and tried to put them into, into natural groupings here on this PowerPoint that I'm gonna share with you in a minute. Um, so our idea is kind of, we're gonna discuss those um, and then kind of see how they work together and maybe move towards how they fit with some of this group's strengths um, as, as described uh, in the duties that, that Turner brought up a minute ago. And then after that, we're, we're gonna kind of build on it with another, little segment I'm going to do about some some greater context and then have some more conversation. So um, we'd like this as we present it, if you have questions, if you have comments, if you have thoughts, um, to share them so we can start talking about it all rather than just me and Turner saying this is what we saw. Um, so with that, um, Turner, do you want me to keep talking? Sure. Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you to the counselor who's <laughs> having to leave us now. So appreciate your participation. She may have already. Oh, I missed that. Ducked out. Yeah, that's all right. Um. So yeah, these were kind yeah. of the, the bigger categories um, that we saw looking through all of the the different post-it notes that we've tried to show as little post-it notes over here. Um, so we've got kind of one group, um, and these are in no particular order, by the way. There's not like any hierarchy here. This is just on the screen um, of kind of the, the BCAP stuff, right? Like action advocacy, um, accessibility um, of the BCAP for the public, um, and then kind of how to use the, the Climate Action Plan as a resource. 
Um, and Turner, just jump in anytime if I'm missing it. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're doing um, great. It's this was challenging. The, the the Jamboard was, you know, had a lot of different ideas, types of ideas going in a lot of different directions. So we tr really tried to distill it down, as Kevin said, into groups of concepts that seem to fit together. So bear with us while we try to walk you through that thinking. <laughs> and then the next category was this kind of learning and context category around different programs um, and projects that the city um, has going on or is thinking about or uh, maybe are ongoing. So we've just like listed a few that were listed in the Jamboard there. Uh, things relating to the, to the tree canopy. Um, at the active transportation plan was mentioned, I think at least more than once. Um, affordable housing was brought up. Uh, composting at multifamily housing. So these are all, um, activities that the city is involved in, um, all of these ones listed here currently, um, and kind of highlighted um, the need for, for additional context for you all on the work that the city is doing um, and how that kind of context and learning will become uh, a big part of being able to uh, provide the recommendations uh, and, and advice the group is, is set up to do. Um, so we're going to talk about that a lot more tonight because I think that's yeah. a pretty large bucket. Mm -hmm. Want me to take one here? Sure. If you agree. Um, so the next category in there that sort of came to life from the Jamboard was this notion about criteria for selecting the work, the projects that you work on or the work that you do. And we heard things, oh, I have to make it bigger so I can actually read it, um, including things that are sort of quick and now, shovel ready, low hanging fruit, early success, that kind of theme to it. At the same time, there were also um, this, this concept of finding the, you know, the largest impact, helping direct the, the city towards those actions that, that have the biggest impact on carbon, uh, carbon goals, and both in terms of Sort of carbon reduction and kind of reach into the community. Uh, and then there was also this notion about, well, we should also be looking for additional benefits, public health um, and natural resources along, you know, there can be some collateral benefit, if you will, from climate actions in, in other areas that aren't specifically climate related. And then there was another group about engagement um, and how this group can work with both other boards and commissions um, and other committees, um, as well as with the NACs um, and opportunities for involvement there. And then um, engagement with the community, which is really kind of one of the, the strengths that this group is, is set up for, um, is to have that back and forth dialogue with the community and, and help kind of educate on the existing um, actions that are going on, which again feeds back into needing that that context piece that was in that that second category. And then sort of another category of content that was on the Jamboard we felt was, it's, it's kind of re related to selection criteria, but really more about once you've decided what to work on, how, what kind of guiding principles or what kind of principles are gonna guide your work on that. So looking for, in other words, things that um, that are proven and evidence-based so that, you know, that's got some real uh, um, solidity behind it. Looking for equitable impacts, impacts on equity. Look, um, trying to use uh, models to identify things that work and don't, um, bet, you know, forwarding or promoting best practices and looking for examples both lo locally and further afield um, you know for example in other sort of similar sized cities or that sort of thing looking around uh, you know doing kind of research to 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 find the best path forward for for this city and then finally we have this kind of potential outcomes note which was 
I'm not saying that this is the limit of potential outcomes. This is just what was on the Jamboard. Um, and so we put the, the climate lens note here under potential outcomes, and then even things that are on some of these other sticky notes could also be considered outcomes. Um, but yeah, that's just another note. And then I, I left one blank in case we want to talk about it, add some other stuff. We have a, a few more slides that build on this, but I think um, now is a good time to maybe just hear some thoughts or not if no one has any thoughts <laughs> before we go to the next slide. The, the challenge for, for us was then what to do with this of a sort of different information and what we tried to do, tried to build was kind of a model or, or an equation for how this group can work together using the ideas that were brought forth in, in these different categories in the Jamboard. So you wanna sure. advance that slide. Um, so, Don't panic because there's math. I know, it's right? Real math. It's just, it's just symbols. But that's what it kind of felt like to us. It's, it was like there's an opportunity to bring different pieces together in order to get to the result, which I'll start at the back is is recommendations for policymakers for city council. That's what your primary um, uh, point of engagement or your primary uh, task is is to advise. Um, and bring recommendations to policymakers. But what we felt like is that it starts with having context, understanding of the work that the city is doing through your staff liaison, what projects the city's actually doing with respect to the BCAP, how, that, how the city's ongoing work is reflecting the, what's in the BCAP and how it's pulling it out and, and taking it on. Um, and that context also includes the sort of criteria that you want to use for choosing which of all these different things you work on, as well as the principles you then apply to it. So that's kind of context is are the things that are at your fingertips, what the city is doing, how you want to uh, prioritize your work and what principles you want to bring to bear on it. And then you add to that um, outside research, sort of joint learning with this group about what else, What other information do you need in order to render a recommendation? Um, and that's going to involve you seeking out other examples from other places, all those things we've talked about. And then the final piece to add in is, is engagement. You are, your strength is that you already represent you know, a cross section of the community, but you also have the ability to reach out to the community to um, both individually and potentially with, you know, direct action by the task force, but um, you are there to channel kind of that community information um, and, and help raise the awareness of the, for the council on, on what the community is thinking and wanting and doing uh, on climate issues. So, um, you bring those more three things to bear. Oh, go ahead. I was just yeah. going to say, Turner, and the more that's yeah. brought into that piece, right, the more kind of voices that you all help kind of bring into this conversation on can help maximize the, the power of the recommendations that you put forward, right, instead of it just being, you know, these are what the 16 folks on the Climate Action Task Force would suggest we do. Um, it's it's um, having that back and forth with community members and saying, you know, I've been out there and I've been talking to people and this is what, this is what people are thinking. And then it, it, it just goes a lot, a lot further. Um, so yeah, sorry to jump in there, Trevor. Oh, no, that's great. You should. Um, this was a complicated discussion. We are <laughs> trying to make sense of all this. Um, so that sort of the product of those three kind of big pieces, context and research and engagement is what you then take to city council in terms of recommendations or policy about what the city is doing, about what it could be doing, about whether and how it's, it's uh, implementing the climate action plan, all those things that are fed by that sort of equation, if you will. Um, 
the other outcome we didn't talk too much about and and maybe is something for further discussion down the road is is whether and how the task force can kind of do its own thing is in addition to um making recommendations which is your primary making recommendations to city council which is your sort of primary assignment from the city council but there is definitely this opportunity for you to to take on you know an outward communication or interaction with with the community in ways um, that you are uniquely suited for because of the composition of this group so what those look like i don't know um, at this point but you may get some ideas as you as you start working for it so we'd be really interested to hear what you think about that and whether that helps make sense of the work we did last time on the jam board Maggie um yeah I think this is actually really helpful as far as like getting things kind of narrowed down um so I really appreciate the work that you both did on this um and then looking at this last piece I guess one of my initial thoughts just putting it out there is like do we want to delegate anything um to climate action task force members as far as things like research go or engagement nobody has to answer that question now it's just i'm kind of like putting that out there that was one of my initial thoughts based on this um math equation that you have here at the end Yeah, that's a that's a great question and something you'll be sorting out as you go along is how to bring in that outside perspective and what that looks like part of what we had planned for the second half of this meeting um may get a little bit of a head start on but um was to try to begin to fill in some of that context if this is making sense to you one thing that it, it we thought is that one of the it would be really helpful for you all to know a bit more about what the city is and isn't doing with with a some degree of specificity related to climate and specifically as related to climate action plan um, because I mean, there's a lot the city's doing a lot of stuff um, it's doing a lot of things generally and a lot of what they're doing also interfaces with the climate action plan and it would just be helpful for you to know at least at the start here and from at least the kind of 30,000 foot level what it is that, um, that the city is doing or is not doing by this. so to help fill in that context piece, help you decide what what further information you need and what next steps to take. Yeah, I mean, basically, what we would like this kind of context box to become is kind of a bit of a ongoing education plan, right, for the group. Where tonight we're going to talk about some stuff, and then we'll we'll have a chat at the end of. The information that I put out there about what the group wants to know more about. Um, and then we can start building out some future plans for getting the right folks to come and talk about those things or for me to come and talk about them um, and kind of have a little more forward plan about what, what context we want to build for the group um, as opposed to kind of doing it on the fly. Um, so we have this other slide too, which I think is just kind of a rearrangement <laughs> of what we looked at before, but we had it up here. I think Turner kind of already described it, just these, these two different boxes of the outcomes of, of recommendations for policymakers, um, and then also if there's any um, and special initiatives that the, the Climate Action Task Force wants to be working on, kind of like um, self-driven kind of projects. Um, 
you know, like if you wanted to have like a little expo about micro mobility or something. Um, and then of course, uh, the annual report, um, I think in the, both the operating principles and the resolution that created the Climate Action Task Force, um, council is expecting, um, well, I guess I shouldn't say council is expecting, it is in the resolution that says um, that the Climate Action Task Force will report annually to council. So um, just something to keep in, in the back of, of your minds and also kind of with formal documentation as, as we get started with having uh, someone um, kind of recording everything, um, just using that these, these three kind of areas to eventually build into that uh, formal report uh, that will have recommendations that accompany it. I'm um, going in the wrong direction. Um, and so, yeah, those those initiatives will be kind of um, two-sided in that they'll have a public public engagement and public education and action, right? So like outward um, facing with the group, but also uh, the group re receiving feedback from the community. Um, and then over there on the left with the, the recommendations for policymakers, that's back to the task force acting as a resource, right? You all are a resource for city projects, you're a resource for the community um, in order to meet the climate action goals, and you're a resource for um, city council for um, information on community engagement. Um, do you have anything to add while I look through my notes here? I'm happily talking away with my mute button. On. Sorry. Um, I know I don't have anything to add. I, I, I would encourage if others have thoughts or if this is resonating with them or not, please feel free to. Oh, a hand that went up. Rebecca. Hi. I'm sorry I'm not on video today. i um, like to uh, absolutely um, state my preference to uh, accept Kevin's offer of context for what the city is doing for the programs. Um, I feel like we've been asking for that for a while. So whatever you're willing to offer us in that regard, I think um, we would gladly accept. Well, you're in luck because that's what we're going to do for the next half hour. <laughs> and it looks like we'll have lots of opportunity for questions um, as we go through that. And I think we're a little ahead of schedule, yes? Yeah, we are ahead of schedule. Um, and so, yeah, before I go on to the next thing, I, I, I just seeing this in my notes, it's something that I wanted to say. So. Um, I just kind of wanted to, to reiterate the idea that, that the intent of the group um, was never to enlist you all to be doing work or research or things like that, that the city should be doing, right? Because um, the city has staff that do that as opposed to, to you all. Um, the, the purpose of forming the, the task force was to get input and perspective on the work that is occurring or um, someone to say, hey, this work's not occurring and should be occurring. Um, and then, and then to harness kind of that input and provide it to the decision makers. So you all hearing from departments um, um, and, and building that context and, and providing input to them along the way about what you already know, what, what you bring to the conversation, um, and to advocate for uh, certain things to move forward, um, keeping running lists of kind of what you've heard and what is what um, you know is, is coming down the line. Um, we talked earlier about like Councillor hartmeyer Prig. we're gonna have a conversation in, in March with everyone about how, how uh, she can bring information to you and what kind of information you all want to be receiving um, from council and, and, and the back and forth there. Um, and then to kind of put all of that together and, and use it um, when you're in front of an audience, um, mainly um, for 
providing a, a report or recommendations. So the, um, the context piece, right, is, is a huge part of that. And I feel like, I know, I know Rebecca just, just said you all have been asking for it for a while. And um, yeah, I, I, I feel like I haven't maybe done a great job of providing a context for, for all the work that is taking place. Um, and I think part of that um, is because it's, it's, it's such a large um, topic, right? Um, so it's not really feasible to cover everything. Um, so I'm gonna to attempt to kind of give, like Turner said, like the 30,000 foot view. Um, and I'm gonna, I went through the last two years of, of progress reports um, to council. So some of you may have seen this information before, um, if you've looked at that um, or if you've watched those presentations. Um, so, Thank you in advance for your, for your patience. Um, but I'm gonna go through them again quickly or as, as quickly as I can. There's kind of a lot of information. Um, and then at the end of it, what we, what we wanna come, come away with is just kind of knowing where you want to dig in more, right? This isn't the end all be all of the context. This is like, here's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so as I'm talking, um, just kind of jot down what, what you want to know more about items that catch your interest um, so that we can gather um, more information on that and, and more folks um, to come and talk to you and like I said kind of work on populating some sort of um, education plan for for the coming year um, so I'm just going to jump right in and start start with all this so these are some things that are going on that are some of these are organized by category um, some of them are organized by categories that align with the four chapters of the climate action but um, these first several slides are from the last year, um, calendar year 2021, um, of what was going on at the city that I, I presented to council. And like I said, this is not everything that's happening. This was a, a self-reporting from departments of, of things that they wanted to highlight. Um, so we've got, um, we're working on a community-wide clean energy program, which um, is aimed at meeting action number 18 in the climate action plan, which is zero emissions for electricity, the zero emissions for electricity goal. So this is working with um, PGE, who is the uh, electricity utility provider for Beaverton um, to create um, a new rate class that's in line with uh, the legislation that recently passed um, last session, the um, HB 2021, right? The Clean Energy for All bill um, had a whole section in it about muni green tariffs and um, utilities being allowed to create these rate classes. So what this would do is offer renewable uh, electricity at scale to the entire community on, a, um, on an opt-out basis rather than an opt-in basis. Right now you can choose to purchase um, renewable energy at a premium. Um, this would automatically enroll everyone uh, in this, this new program. So that's one thing that's going on, working with developing that um, with PGE, with the guidance from the PUC. Um, another thing that the city is doing um, is renewable energy at city facilities, which um, meets action 20. So powering government operations from renewable energy um, and also increasing energy efficiency in buildings we participate in the Energy Trust of Oregon's Strategic Energy Management Program. Um, and then we also have the 2035 Carbon Neutral City Operations Goal. Um, so in order to be carbon neutral by 2035, we have to uh, figure out what to do about the city fleet that all runs off of internal combustion engines. So um, EV infrastructure planning, that's going on right now. Um, and the city, is participating in PGE's fleet partner program, um, which will help us add the, it's called the Make Ready infrastructure. I don't know how familiar everyone is with uh, electric vehicle charging, but you hear electric vehicle charging and you think about uh, the charger, right? <laughs> but there's really all of this other stuff before the charger, the, the, the conduit and the meter and the panels and making sure that there's enough uh, electrical service to the site. So all of that needs to be in place before you can even install a charger. And before you can purchase a vehicle, you need to have a charger. So it's kind of one is prerequisite to the other. 
So um, I'm working um, on two sites right now where the city fleet parks the three sites. Um, so hopefully we'll be adding uh, EV charging infrastructure uh, starting this year at two of uh, the three fleet parking locations. So it's kind of ongoing. Um, something else that the city has been involved in to meet action 38, which is adopting uh, Oregon's energy reach code. Um, I don't know if anyone's familiar with the reach code. So you have the building code, um, which you have to build by. And then currently there is an optional reach code that goes um, above and beyond the existing building code for energy efficiency, but it's optional. So it's like you can use it if you wanna, if you want to. Um, so there was legislation in the last session um, to allow cities to um, adopt the reach code so that everyone's kind of not tailoring their own code and that there can be one uniform reach code that can be, can be followed for the state. Um, and it didn't pass, but it's um, on the roster again for, for um, this session. Um, the mayor will actually be uh, testifying um, at the, the hearing that's being held for it tomorrow um, um, to, um, I'm losing my words here, um, to advocate for the, the city's uh, support for, for this, this bill. Um, next up, we have the Home Energy Score Program, which I think I've talked about a little bit before. Home Energy Score Program is, um, a program that was developed by the US Department of Energy and um, the Oregon Department of Energy to rate homes. So kind of like a nutrition label for a home um, so that you can say what its energy use is rather um, than based on the occupants, it's based on how it's built. Um, so neighboring jurisdictions have adopted a home energy score program that makes it mandatory. Um, to provide uh, this kind of report as homes are sold. So that's something we're also exploring. Um, and then along with the electric vehicle charging infrastructure um, is policy that goes along with uh, EV charging. Um, if anyone has any questions, by the way, just throw your hand up or shout them out or something because I will um, gladly stop talking for a moment. <laughs> Next up is uh, this food and waste category. Um, we've been talking a lot about food lately. Um, a third of all food is never eaten, right? So that generates an enormous amount of emissions. Um, so I have another presentation on that if, if you want to hear it. But these are some, some actions that are, that are going on around food and waste. Um, action six is about reducing residential uh, and business waste of food. Um, so this is like the city's uh, promotion in, in the Eat Smart Waste Less campaign. And now uh, the Department of Environmental Quality has this new Bad Apples campaign, which is where this fun graphic is coming from. Um, so um, promoting uh, these campaigns and then capacity building for, for businesses um, as part of the Food Waste Stops With Me initiative. Um, and then in the, this coming year, um, the food scraps collection um, mandate. So this is to increase business participation in food scraps collection. Um, this is working with local businesses to set them up for compliance for the um, upcoming requirements. So Metro has a mandatory food scrap separation requirement that's taking a place, taking effect uh, this coming year. It's kind of been delayed because of the, the COVID pandemic. Um, so it's going to apply to most food service businesses by 2025 um, to divert more food waste from the landfill um, so to limit methane emissions. Um, there's also a couple actions in the Climate Action Plan, Action 7 and 85, that are about um, expanding local food security and emergency distribution, prioritizing vulnerable populations. So um, this is like food security and, and, and donation work. Um, so we got a couple of hands up when you oh. have a moment. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Rebecca, Rebecca and then Reggie, just letting you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Hi, Kevin. Yep. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, my understanding from talking to parents in our elementary school community is that 
the food waste composting in the green trash bins is not available for multifamily housing and apartment buildings. Do you know, are there plans underway to change that in Beaverton or maybe I misunderstood? No, that, that is correct. There's not um, residential multifamily composting. Um, and this is kind of an ongoing um, dilemma that I will definitely have experts in, in that topic come in and talk to, to the group if, if they would like. Um, there's a number of, of issues around it that I can't really speak to what they are right now. Um, so if that's something we'd like to learn more about, we can, we can put that on the list and definitely have, have someone from the recycling team come talk about them. Well, that would be, that's definitely an issue in the small part of the community that I represent. So um, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Reggie. Uh, thanks. Yeah, as a lifelong Beaverton resident, I see how valuable the city's community gardens are. So when I see um, action 7 and 85, um, as far as like the city council or staff saying that they're being implemented, and then I see the city staff also wanting to destroy the, the Beaverton Community Center and the community gardens there at Fifth Street and Hall. Um, I think that's a lot of cognitive dissonance. How can the city be wanting to destroy the community gardens and displacing the, the, the people's ways of getting fresh food um, year round um, and also be talking about supporting these goals? Yeah, um, that's an excellent point. I don't know if it's, if you really want <laughs> my comment on it, right? Like the city council and, and leadership, I would say are all, always trying to weigh um, the trade-offs, right? The, it would, the project that you're referring to is about, um, they were talking about putting multifamily housing there, which I think is, um, or affordable housing, um, which I'm not sure if it's currently still slated to happen, but we can we can get that on the list as well to um, have someone come and come and discuss. Yeah, Rebecca, we shouldn't be destroying community gardens. Yeah, to, I mean, it, if if that is, um, I'm trying to think about how to go, go about this. Um, these are things that can should be should be noted for your recommendations, right? Um, it's not really my place to uh, agree or disagree with your comment here. Um, it's, um, yeah, for the group to, to note in the context and then uh, have that for future discussions with um, the council liaison and, and with council themselves when, when providing recommendations. And I'm, just so you know, I'm, I'm tracking those, those issues where people are asking for deeper information and depending, you know, depending on how many we get, we have to prioritize it, but, um, I'm, I'm keeping a list of a couple, you know, a couple of issues so far that have drawn questions. So, thank you. Yeah, Rebecca, is your hand back up, or is this from the, from the first one? No, I'm sorry, I'm on my phone today, so I will be better about lowering my oh. hand. Okay. Um, all right. Well, yeah. yeah if anyone else too. has any um, comments as I go along, um, throw your hand up and, and turn her if you'll shut them out because um, I'm looking at multiple screens here. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm um, so some of the food security um, and donation work um, that's been happening has been about um, expanding um, these emergency distribution efforts for vulnerable populations. Um, and so this is about working with, uh, to increase food donation um, amongst businesses and con connecting them with organizations where, where um, uh, edible food would have otherwise gone to waste. So since the start of the pandemic through this fiscal year, the city will have provided um, around $180,000 in, in social services grants to organizations that are focused on addressing hunger and food security. So if that's kind of a topic that we wanna dive into, um, the folks who, who run that program um, can come and talk about it. Um, this past year, the city also donated a, 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 a van, a used van from the city's fleet to, to one of these organizations to support their work. Um, staff are also currently participating in Washington County's Food Access and Essential Needs Task Force for BIPOC communities 
to identify opportunities to increase culturally relevant healthy foods to community members that are disproportionately affected by food scarcity, um, especially in emergency events, which as we know are more and more common because of climate change. Um, what else do we have on here? So the Library of Things over at the library um, is, is working to address action number two. Um, and again, just because there's work that's happening on these actions doesn't mean it's like, ooh, that's done, check it off the list. A lot of these are like ongoing things that need to continue happening um, and, and maybe have other activities that can be a part of them other than just say like this action, increase access to community sharing programs. It's not just about the library of things. But the library of things is one example, of it, um, which is really cool over there at the library. If you don't know what it is, it's like um, you can check out items rather than books. So you don't have to buy an air fryer. Maybe you just want to like check one out, try it. Um, but one cool thing that they they did in this past year was um, these, these mobile uh, Wi-Fi hotspots. Um, so they got like 18 hotspots that can now be checked out for up to three weeks because um, a lot of folks rely on the library as their only source of Wi-Fi. So now they can, you know, that they still rely on it. Um, they don't have to actually be at the library. They can they can check out these these uh, Wi-Fi hotspots. Um, and then another topic that again um, someone can speak better to than I can is the the Recycling Modernization Act that happened last year. So um, this is uh, a pretty significant milestone for materials management. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a, a perfect <laughs> um, act, but um, it's aimed at those three actions there um, and is going to kind of start to, to shift the, the cost um, from consumers um, to, to producers um, to make the goal of, of, of reducing plastics production pollution and, and making recycling easier. Um, so I will jump to the next one. Then we have housing. Um, I'll go through this pretty quick because um, Rob came and talked about the housing options project. That's the first thing up here. Um, it meets a, a, a bunch of different actions in the plan. Um, there's also the Metro Affordable Housing Bond. Um, and this is about developing strategies for affordable housing. Um, there's $120 million worth of affordable housing projects slated, um, two of them scheduled to break ground um, here in early 2022. Um, and Rihanna, I see you have your hand up. I'm just gonna finish this one little note um, about the, the Cooper Mountain Community Plan. Um, this is about planning for another 4,000 units of new homes um, and they're in a multi-year planning phase and, and they're looking for a lot of innovative ways to, to address um, challenges. Um, one of the things was, that was presented to council early in the year was about natural resource protection um, and resilient stream corridors. Um, so again, just an, an opportunity for, for how projects can, can be incorporating items like that. Uh, Rihanna, I think your hand was up first. Um, this is regarding the last bullet of the previous slide. Um, I think it's really important for the like recycling modernization. I don't know how far we are in that process, but if there's any communication that can go out, like in that little magazine that comes out, um, that the city sends out or whatever. Um, I just I know a lot of people are upset because of legislation with the Ridwell thing and not being able to have those recyclables get in taken. So I think it's really important for the city to communicate what they are doing and like what that will encompass from like those like tangibles of like, are you taking cider from or what, like what's it gonna expand to? What's the goal um, I think as far as like for the community? Um, and on that same note of those booklets, I don't know if it's slated to make those um, like compostable instead of like, I think they're like kind of shiny. And so I don't know if those are as recyclable, at least they don't seem, um, or compostable as, um, I think that they should be, um, coming from the city. That's just my comment. I don't know if that matters, but I don't know. So maybe that we can talk to about that too. No, excellent. Okay. Um, you're referring to the, to the, the, your city newsletter. The yes, one. I think it's like, has like the mayor's comment and I don't know. Okay. Jennifer, I see your hand up as well. 
Yes, I wanted to put um, the REACH code and the home energy score on the list of things to find out a little bit more about. Um, I think that the home energy score is a good way to um, educate the public in a way that's not very taxing to, <laughs> to what, if, if we could get home energy scores required in be written, that would be a good way um, to self-perpetuate education on energy efficiency to the citizens. All right, Turner, thank you for noting these things. I appreciate this in real time. This will help for later on. Um, all right, so next is uh, water and natural systems. Um, so we've got some, some items around storm water flooding and, and erosion mitigation. Um, and these are kind of addressing two actions from the BCAP. Um, and under these, there's participation in the Tualatin Watershed Enhancement Collaborative. Um, and there's also the upcoming um, develop or the ongoing development of a downtown stormwater subbasin strategy, um, along with the upgrade to the stormwater drainage master plan, which is going to be complete by the end of uh, this year or this fiscal year. Um, and um, that's going to have kind of um, preventative measures for major flooding events. Um, because when we talk about climate change, right, there's gonna be more extreme rain events um, in the times when it is raining. Um, Reggie, yep. Uh, to what extent are medium and, and large maturing trees integrated into actions 71 and 74 at this moment? I would say that they are, their integration is not documented or like specifically called out in the climate action plan, right? I mean, you've, you've seen the climate action plan, it's lacking some, some detail and some metrics. So that's, a, that's an excellent point. Um, and when it comes to what the stormwater folks are doing in the stormwater um, uh, drainage master plan, um, I can find out if, um, what the what the role of of, of large trees is playing, because um, there is a role for them to be played, right? So, um, also on here is water delivery and monitoring. Um, so this is about moving towards remotely read water meters, um, so that cars don't have to drive around and, and read the read the water meters all the time. And also um, water system meters. So that's different than the water meter on your house. This is a meter for the system itself. Um, and these are gonna be integrated into a new system that's automatically read so that it allows for more efficient control um, of water pump stations. Because water pump stations um, use all sorts of energy to move all of the water around so that it comes neatly out of the tap when you turn it on. Um, and with that in mind, the city has been um, undertaking uh, investments in upgrading water storage pumps um, for efficiency and renewable energy as well as resiliency. So last year, there was uh, work done at the Meridian pump station. I mean, I, don't, I guess I don't really need to go through all of these unless you want me to, but there's, there's several different pump stations and, and we could have a whole presentation on um, all of the different <laughs> pump stations that the city uh, maintains and, and what they're doing at them. Um, but basically um, there's upgrades going on right now um, at several of them to increase the efficiency of the pumps as well as to um, in one of them add uh, hydropower turbines. So um, basically putting a turbine in the, um, in the pipe itself so that the water pressure turns it, it's like you have water pressure anyway, so you may as well turn the turbine while it's going through there. Um, so that's gonna generate um, a whole bunch of uh, kilowatt hours every year. Um, and that's in addition to the solar panels that are currently on one of the pump stations that go towards, towards feeding them. Um, and then speaking of trees, the drought resistant tree list, um, has been updated by the, the Public Works Department to reflect future conditions. 
Um, and then I also shared with you all in email earlier today about the um, tree code audit um, and some information about that. So a I couple see, of hands up. I yep. see some hands up. Yeah. Maggie, I think is first. I just had a quick question about um, action 62 and 66. Um, are they, will this be requirements from the city? And also will those things apply to multifamily housing? That is a great question. I mean, the, the number 62, right? So the identifying and fixing leaks, the, the city already has kind of a threshold um, that's allowed in the system, I believe. Um, and I can look up what that is, but um, it's last year when I did the reporting, I mean, it was within the limits. So it's kind of a system-wide thing. And when you say um, action 66 for multifamily housing, um, the, the water pump upgrades are kind of like a system-wide thing. They don't refer to specific buildings, but there are other actions in the climate action plan about um, improving energy uh, efficiency and water conservation at buildings um, in which multifamily housing would be included. Um, there's also an item in here later on I'm gonna to talk to talk about, about um, uh, the water efficiency rebate program that the city has. Reggie? Yeah, uh, just two things. Um, for Action 75, I think we need to be using more specific language. I don't know what tree list the city has. There is an approved tree list or specifically approved street trees, but there's no indication of what list is specifically being updated. And my other, uh, the second half is just a comment. I just want to respectfully challenge Action 75 in that, like, I don't believe in my professional opinion that the city has made truly significant and meaningful updates to the approved street tree list. I really don't feel like it should be touted as an accomplishment because virtually nothing has changed. Um, our street tree list is still incredibly regressive compared to other cities in the area like Portland, Vancouver, um, and there are still so many trees on there that are not good fits for, for the future climate, future drought conditions. There are a lot of trees that are overplanted, trees that we know are more likely to pose hazards to infrastructure or the public in their lifespan or have short, uh, short lifespans. So I would like to find out more as to what exactly was changed and why more substantial changes have not been implemented. Um, we seriously need to be looking at cities like Portland where they've already done the pioneering work of updating their approved street tree lists. Uh, and I, I think the action 75 should not be considered um, something that the city has actually done and, and worked on just simply because the results are inconsequential and still do not address the bigger problems with the approved street tree list. So noted. Rebecca, I see your hand is up again. <laughs> again, I didn't mean I'm to sorry. say again like that. <laughs> That's I mean, okay. The comments, the comments are more than welcome. That's what we're here for. I, I just wanted to No worries. Sure. Um, I, I'm taking the opportunity for this slide to ask um, a systemic question because I see a couple of points here that are system-wide. And I'm wondering if maybe you can, um, can answer this here. Can you tell us about what, if any, um, protocols are in place when the city makes um, changes like the ones on this side that are system-wide um, for things to be viewed for an environmental justice lens to make sure that, for example, the storage pumps are being done um, in terms of the order in an equitable fashion to make sure that trees are being planted um, in different communities in an equitable fashion, um, not for one action number in particular, but just systemically. You know, I know that um, when you had uh, our, our newly voted um, you know, uh, 
uh, uh, group dynamics that we just voted on racial equity was pretty early on in the plan. And I know Turner mentioned that that was true for most, if not all, Beaverton City um, commissions. But I'm wondering how that is incorporated, if it's incorporated across the board or how that gets done. And if now is not a good time to answer that, then um, you can put a pin in that and talk about it later. Um, thank you. Yeah, I don't have a great answer for that right now. I would, I would, I, I'd like to revisit it with a with a better answer. Um, but it's on more of a project by project basis than it is on a a, a system wide level right now. Um, and I have an upcoming slide about metrics for the climate action plan and how these things are measured. And I think that's one of the one of the items that can fall into, into that. Um, all right, I'm gonna keep going until I see some more hands. Um, I believe I was up to the downtown Beaverton Parks and Open Spaces Framework Plan. So this is a upcoming project that is a high level uh, plan and implementation strategy to develop more parks, open spaces, trails, wildlife habitat, and along with it, um, stormwater detention for downtown Beaverton. Um, the framework um, has development has already begun and will be running um, through the end of August. Um, um, next, we have you guys, right? So um, this was just a community engagement slide. Um, it, I don't know if it seems like a lot or not, but I, it was a, it was quite quite the lift to get this group up and, and started and um, recruited and approved um, and all of that. Um, and some of the other things we've been successful at doing along with it, like the stipend pilot and whatnot. Um, so um, as far as community engagement goes around the city's climate action work, um, you all are fairly um, reflective of it. And that's why you see yourselves up here on the screen. Um, also in the community engagement category, we have the, the Backyard Habitat Program, um, which is about expanding uh, the Backyard Habitat Program, um, which each year is uh, more, more, um, more yards are certified um, than the previous year. I have a risk and resiliency assessment listed here because that's one of the things that we're considering undertaking um, in this coming year, um, TBD. Um, and then the shelter services. Um, so this is about improving access to warming and cooling centers. Um, so the weather shelter um, was open last year for the longest shelter season, 196 days in a row, um, 24 hours a day uh, during the pandemic. Um, and is now open again at the Beaverton Community Center. Um, and the city library also serves as a, a cooling center during the extreme heat events last summer. Um, there are cities exploring opportunities for a permanent year-round shelter um, that aligns with uh, several of the community well-being actions from the Climate Action Plan. Um, and I have developed smoke and develop wildfire smoke and rescue centers listed under here, not because that's something that has occurred, but because that's something that needs to occur and that there is um, opportunity for alignment with um, this idea of um, finding a, a, a permanent uh, uh, shelter um, to operate in the city. Sorry, I skipped ahead trying to look at my notes. Um, yeah, there used to be something on here about remote work, but it's happening for everyone, so I won't mention it. Um, and then measurement and reporting. So these are things that, that, that need to be um, worked on internally by the sustainability program to, to better capture the work both that the city is doing and also um, work that partner organizations are doing, right? Because these are community-wide goals. So um, it's one thing to say what the city is doing towards it, but um, it's another thing to capture the information that um, other organizations in the community are also doing that, that help meet these goals. So. Um, 
building out uh, metrics that are uh, relevant to um, the actions in the climate action plan and also making sure that they're regionally relevant and congruent, right? We don't wanna be using one metric uh, when Hillsborough is using a completely different one and Washington County is using a third one, um, kind of making sure these all work together. Um, and then of course, having uh, consistent sources of data because I'm sure as anyone who's tried to look up uh, data related items to climate change, you can, you can find you can find the data you're looking for if you look for long enough, right? I mean, so it's you have to decide what data we're going to we're going to use in order um, to tell tell the story consistently year by year instead of uh, one year reporting on one set of data and the next year reporting on another. Um, and then other stuff. There's just some side notes. So then this is the 2020 reporting items. Um, which many of them are similar because there are ongoing efforts. So rather than read through all of these, um, I think I'll just point out the ones that are different. Uh, most of these are ongoing efforts. Um, on here is also the single use plastic policy, um, which work was begun on in 2020 um, and is still continuing, um, just kind of again, balancing priorities to, to figure out when to, to bring that forward, to reduce single use uh, wares, which became rather difficult in the year 2020 due to the pandemic. Uh, energy sourcing we talked about, um, the microgrid uh, opportunities for microgrids are noted in the climate action plan. So just to note, um, there was a microgrid pilot at the construction of the new public safety center. Um, so we can talk more about that if that's something microgrids are of interest. Um, we also have the water efficiency rebate program, which I mentioned a moment ago. Um, in 2020, there was about $13,000. Um, I think there was slightly more in 2021. Um, and that is a program to replace uh, fixtures in residential homes and then um, the the um, occupants can uh, submit uh, receipts to the city basically for a rebate for um, uh, low flow uh, fixtures replacement. Um, in 2020, the city also uh, closed out a energy efficiency and conservation block grant for weatherization repairs um, in low income owner occupied dwellings. I think that was for around $137,000 uh, that took place over a number of years. Um, so there could be opportunities to explore kind of a redo of that. Um, and in 2020, the downtown design code uh, was approved, uh, which has various items relating to housing density, green infrastructure, uh, solar panels, et cetera, as part of the development code. Uh, reach code advocacy last year, um, as we mentioned, it, it didn't go through in the legislative session, but is up again this year. Um, last year, the Electric Avenue um, charging uh, station block opened uh, on Canyon and Broadway um, in collaboration with PGE, um, and they also uh, installed some EV bus charging for the Richmond School District. Um, and also in the transportation category was some increase in uh, service line frequency for uh, a couple of bus lines. Um, supporting the Safe Routes to Schools program is in the Climate Action uh, Plan. Um, and so um, that has been an ongoing effort over the past two years. Um, and then the water storage pump upgrades that I mentioned earlier, um, some of them started last year. We've talked about all of this stuff. Um, these are just older numbers. Uh, and so, yeah, that's kind of the, the high level overview. That doesn't encompass all of the work. There's other things that, I'm, that are going on that, that I didn't mention in either of these reports, um, but kind of wanted to start there um, and maybe come up with either some specifics or just some general categories um, of where we'd like to, to dig in more. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing 
And then I'm going to go to the Jamboard. And then I'm going to start sharing again. And we can kind of just have open conversation here for the next few minutes. Um, if anyone has anything to add, Turner's already got those notes. Um, I was going to add them kind of in real time, but it seems like we're at 7.43, and I think we have to move on to public comment at 7.45. <laughs> so we've got a few minutes. Um, if folks want to, I won't add them to the Jamboard, um, but Turner will, will note them. Um, or if anyone wants to hear a list of the things that have been noted so that we can make sure everything is, is on the list, we're happy to read it out. You're muted, Turner. Yeah, I see a couple nods in that regard, so I can I can run down it real quick here. This is lots. It's just more of a naming thing. Um, uh, food waste, green bins, and multifamily housing. Uh, that was the first issue that was identified. Um, community garden versus housing. That, Cycling, a couple of things related to that one. The city producing its materials in a best manner in terms of recyclable, recyclability. And then the whole Ridwell challenge, being able to recycle things that are not currently recycled. Anyway, there's a whole suite of issues around the recycling. Um, noted. Uh, the reach code and home energy scores, uh, something that uh, was a little more information and deeper dive was requested into that and the ability to do that, how that might really be a good vehicle. Um, uh, in, in the integration of mature trees into action 71 and 74, which relate to stormwater, is there, are they taking that into account? Is it, so it's sort of a co-benefit thing. Uh, Perhaps that needs to be investigated. Uh, Actually, 62 and 66 um, apply to multifamily homes. Again, I don't remember off the top of my head. But I think your papers are on. are on your microphone. There's a lot of. Oh, there's a lot sorry. Of shuffling going on. Shuffling, sorry. Uh, yeah, 62 and 66, does does that apply to multifamily housing? I don't remember what 62 and 66 are off the top of my head. I only made the numbers there. Action 75, um, that's related to tree uh, tree lists. What lists are they talking about? Um, and there was some concern about whether there's really been any meaningful change to the street cheese and what could be done to improve um, it or, or be, uh, for example, uh, Portland is is doing maybe a better job. What what was changed? What could be done better? Um, and maybe take a look at what Portland's doing. Um, and then finally, there was a, a question, a more systemic question: What uh, uh, protocols are in place, or what what mechanism is there for considering environmental justice lens um, as the city is doing its its all its different kinds of business. So that's what I have down. Anything missing? Anything I missed in there? Or mischaracterized? Okay. That's what I got. Oh. Awesome. And as always, um, I think we talked about this the last time there. Um, not everyone gives feedback on the spot. Um, right. So if you have feedback to offer afterwards, um, feel free to send it my way. And we'll, um, we'll add Rebecca it. was asking whether or not the Jamboard would be a vehicle for that. I'm not sure. I don't know if that's a good viable ongoing. I, I, I didn't generate it. So you might want to just address that, Kevin, as to whether or not that's the place to do it or whether there's another mechanism for it would be better to do it in email. Okay. And then I can populate it into the Jamboard if we want to use that going forward. Um, okay. I just don't want to, yeah, there's some, some rules we have to follow. So, um, so yeah, send me an email 
um, or a voicemail or call and we'll chat or whatever you want to do. Um, but if there are no further um, comments for right now, then we are going to go to the public comment portion of the meeting. So we do you have a couple hands to shut up? Okay. Yeah, let's do hands first. <laughs> Freddie, I think you're edged yeah, in the first place. I also, want, I, I also want to give uh, Leah a chance to speak as well because her hand went up before mine did and then she lowered it. So Leah, go ahead if you, if you want. Can I just jump in also before? Um, we? It looks like there's no one from the public here anymore. Um, so we'll just keep talking until someone from the public shows up. So no, no need to rush right now. <laughs> Thanks, Freddie. <laughs> um, I was just going to add, and I think I kind of touched upon it maybe at the last meeting that I'd like to delve in a little bit more to the active transportation plan. Um, you know, it was kind of noted there at the very end with a couple of statements, but there seemed to be, in my opinion, some um, actions on the climate action plan that could easily be kind of accomplished. Um, with some existing programs that maybe the city isn't tapped into. Great, I took note. Cool. Ready, um, and then Reggie. Yeah, sure. Um, so I think um, when we were kind of going through that whole PowerPoint and watching um, just kind of the everyone speak through each of their own things. I think two things really jumped out at me. One, it seems like this group needs more information on the how and when and why decisions are, are made in terms of climate action at the city level. Um, because I think knowing how those, you know, like if the city wants to update a tree list, like who does that and what kind of lenses do they go through? Um, because I think that'll kind of help inform whether that needs to be a recommendation and we can help kind of start developing that. Um, so I think the how and the why on climate action at the city level would be helpful for us to know. Um, and then two, uh, I saw a lot of people's just kind of natural passions like come up, right? Whether it's like affordable housing or multifamily housing or trees or water usage or energy reduction. So I think it would also be beneficial for us as a group to if that's noted somewhere or take a poll of some sort to figure out where our individual kind of passions lies because I think that'll be beneficial for us in the coming months as we start kind of breaking down into subcommittees and maybe designating you know different actions for people within the group. Um, so just wanted to note that. Reggie, I think you're up next. Uh, thanks Freddie and Turner. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to um, offer my services as to um, action 69 and 75 under urban flora. Um, you know, we're talking about like low hanging fruit action or action items that are easy to enact that don't necessarily require a council approval, but are rather made at the staffing level. So, um, you know, if we want, if we're interested in, in these enhance street tree strategy to increase water retention, mitigate heat island effect through increased urban canopy and update tree lists for hardiness to reflect expected future conditions. Um, I already have a lot of ideas that I've been compiling over the last several months about how to address these effectively and, and things that can be implemented right now. Um, so with the support of the task force, I would be more than happy to volunteer to be the lead for making recommendations in those action items. I would offer more, but those were the only two out of 86 items that mentioned trees. Reggie, you will be our go-to tree guy. Well, yeah, I, I think there are a lot of things that we could do that could be implemented immediately that would, it, would have a immediate effect on improving our climate outlook here. One thing that um, that Kevin and I discussed was uh, tapping into 
the expertise that lies within this group, um, kind of like Reggie has just offered by having kind of, I think we mentioned it at the last meeting, um, this sort of notion of having um, mini presentations from within this group to each other uh to share your expertise and knowledge on a particular subject or suggestions and that sort of thing for them the group to to consider more deeply and and or take action on so this might be an opportunity to do something like that so we are almost um out of time i was going to remind everyone that Next month, we will also be meeting on a special day um, because of President's Day is when our meeting uh, actually falls. So we'll be meeting on February 10th, which is a Thursday. Um, I had mistakenly put the wrong date in some communication earlier. Um, so I just wanted to let everyone know that it is February 10th, it is a Thursday, and we will be meeting at 6.30 rather than 6 p.m. Um, just to make sure everyone is a little more tired um, for our meeting. Um, and we'll be having the first half of our meeting with the Bicycle Advisory Committee. Um, they requested that we, we come and join them and suggested um, that we do it in February. It kind of works out well for everyone. Um, hopefully it works out for you all. I know it's a different meeting night that you didn't kind of sign off on in advance. Um, so hopefully you can make it. I know that everybody has their, their own obligations and many other things they're working on. Um, the, the new leadership team um, will be getting together at some point with the um, leadership folks from the, the Bicycle Advisory Committee um, to discuss what kind of they wanna cover and, and what we're gonna talk about in that meeting for the first half. Um, so I will be reaching out to arrange all of that. Um, and then the second half of our meeting um, will be kind of have continuing some more of this discussion, closing out um, some stuff with Turner. We'll be saying goodbye to Turner, unfortunately, um, unless you all have overwhelmingly decide that we, we should keep him around for a couple more meetings. <laughs> um, and looking at this list here, I'm not sure if um, the one hour time block will allow us to have kind of a, a visitor from, from another program, but I can try to line up someone from to speak on one of these topics or at least get some answers to some of the more specific questions that were posed tonight. Um, and then in March, um, we'll have um, a session with the council liaison um, and we can discuss kind of some of those systems level questions perhaps around how decisions are made by decision makers. Um, and we can also start to dive into some of these topics. Um, which if there's any that folks really wanna hear about, let me know, otherwise um, we'll, we'll probably um, hopefully get some folks to come from the transportation side to talk about the active transportation plan and some other uh, items that, that dovetail with it or um, folks from the recycling team to address some of these, because uh, I see four different things related to uh, composting, gardening, recycling, modernization, Redwell, et cetera. Um, so yeah. That sound good to everybody. Um, if it doesn't, let me know, and we'll we'll work on a new plan. Turn it sure We'll work on a new plan. <laughs> Closing comments. So, no, uh, that, that's that all sounds right and sounds good. Um, and uh, I look I look forward to meeting with your new leadership and getting. Uh, getting you guys working on what you want to work on, so. All right, well, thanks again, everyone. Um, and we will see you uh, on February 10th, um, hopefully uh, hearing from some of you between now and then. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Thanks, Turner. For thanks, yeah.